Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. On this week's show, we're going to recap Fight to Win 113 in Reno, Nevada. We're going to preview Sogi 2, Polaris 10, Finishers 9, and EBI CJJ Combat World 135, or whatever it's being called now. As always on the show, I'm your host, Maine, joined with my co-host... Austin. How you doing, Austin? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. So before we get into all of that, let's uh, let's do some news. Emil's out for the next two weeks, so we got Austin for this week. I think you're on next week as well. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like your <laughs> scheduling. You're like, I'll be here. So... Uh, and the first news, uh, so Spider Championships looks like it's having some sort of open registration for its next event. Um, it's not a ton of details on this. looks like they're running some sort of contest. Um, it's on their Instagram profile. If you're interested in entering the Spider, and if you're a competitor, you should be, look at their contest, look at the rules, see if you can get an entry into that. Um, in other news, uh, Keenan versus Mergali was announced. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, my. You got to talk into the mic, Austin. Yeah. So Mergali just smashed everyone basically at Brasileiro so I'm pretty interested to see him compete again and it's going to be in the gi right yeah it's definitely made in the gi it's uh, at third coast grappling so we saw third coast grappling uh, we saw Keenan last time versus Tex and Keenan looked like a world beater in that um, I'm not sure if it'll be because third coast does an interesting format which is first to 11 points uh, last time Keenan's match was like just a regular point you know whoever wins on points wins but it'll be interesting to see if the Mergali matchup is actually in that new, that third coast format which is first to 11 wins but it's first to 11 I yeah. thought it was like if you're up by twelve. I might be like misunderstanding that. I know you can like tech fall a guy basically. Maybe up by twelve. I thought I have to look into that. I forgot. I but I know I know it's yeah. You can, win on, you, you can like you can win, win on the match points, on and I like yep. it's like a tech fall. I like that because mm-hmm. like guys can get up get up on someone and like oh he scores one more time he wins and you saw, you saw yeah, a couple times just sitting on a sitting on a yeah. position where you have scored so, two and it's like uh he has to score back on me or it doesn't matter right but you, yeah. if you if you can positionally out dominate a guy like you can still win on points but you can also like win on sub too so yeah. it's, I I like the format it's interesting um so that's a huge headliner because Mergali goes into hibernation and then comes out does a couple events and then does worlds so what's pretty crazy is how stacked the rest of the card is for only like their second event yeah dude it, it looks awesome I'm super excited for that event mm-hmm. coming up so that's on the uh that's on the radar for us I think that's in um that's coming up soon that's like on the 29th of June is what I have on my calendar there so uh, we are gonna we have the patches now for the grappling rewind. We're gonna we're looking at doing a contest in the near future. So keep an eye on the Instagram page, grappling underscore rewind for basically the contest rules for when we start posting contest stuff. So if you want to win a grappling rewind patch, uh, keep a lookout for that. Um, in other news, apparently I got this wrong last week. Uh, BJ Penn might not have been cut by the UFC. Apparently the article I read was titled he rele- he was released, but it was actually that he had released a statement. <laughs> so somebody texted me. It was like, "Hey, he wasn't released yet." And so I looked, and you couldn't find anything that said he's released. So he may be released now. I don't know, but it's apparently, keep that streak going, man. Most fights lost in a row without getting Seven, cut. yeah, seven. So it's not really PGJ news. That's just main being wrong news <laughs> from last week. Eh, um, he won worlds, so he did win worlds <laughs> as an American, which is super impressive. That's right. Uh, let's see. We have. Uh, I thought Kron was going to fight Ryan Hall in the UFC. Which, this is, again, an MMA news for some reason, but we're talking about, like, marquee grapplers, and I like to talk about them. So sure. um, it was supposed to be Kron versus Hall, but now apparently it's Hall versus Elkins, I think. Yeah, that was the one I saw that got announced. Um, it looked like Kron, they're trying to line a fight up for, I think it was, like, Akimoto who said that uh, Kron's going to fight someone, but they're not sure who it, who it is yet. Don't can't wait. I can't wait to see him fight again in the UFC. Yeah. Like, it's so cool to have a winning Gracie back in the UFC after all of these years. Yeah, I mean, I want to see him fight better guys, though, too. Like, Yeah, no, of course. I want mean, to see him like, move through the roster because UFC usually gives you, like, if you're a big guy, they kind of give you a layup matchup or mm-hmm. they just send you a murderer, and then you kind of run out of those guys very, very quickly, Yeah, typically. Yeah, it would be cool to see him fight Hall just for, like, the grappler versus grappler right, matchup. Awesome. And they're both kind of similar tiered because they're not giving Ryan Hall, like, the guys they probably should. So right, makes sense for them to give him Kron if they did. Let's see. Uh, the CBJJ announced testing for all athletes in 2020. Um, I will believe it when I see it. But yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, I thought it was newsworthy. Again, I don't know a ton about CBJJ, but it'll be interesting to see if they can actually implement that level and that scale of testing for their athletes. That may be like the Brazilian Federation, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't know. It had the same. Had a, like a similar logo. Yeah. But there wasn't a ton of information on it. Hmm. When they say testing, I wonder like what level of testing, right? Like. Is it going to be the same as like is it USADA? Is it Uvada? Is it WADA? Yeah. Like what are what level are we doing? So yeah, exactly. I don't know, but there's been a lot of information on testing. Oh, speaking of testing, um, mm-hmm. Tina Proferio, um accepted her 
bank, uh, ban or sanction? Yeah, she accepted her USADA suspension. So it'll go back to the 2018 world sample. Yeah, so it's a retroactive. So, so it's a yep. four-year ban, but it goes back to the basically the previous year. That the she sample that she popped out. Yeah, basically. So 2018 worlds. So four years. So in 2022, she'll be eligible again. So four years. Dude, that's a, such a long time. Yeah. Holy and the, shit. So, so her reasoning, I think it was on like Instagram maybe she posted something. Yeah. Um, her reasoning was that she... Uh, <laughs> We're good. We're not going to cut that. <laughs> By the way, we're recording at 12.40 a.m. on Monday morning because this is the only time that we can get together to do this episode. So mm-hmm. um, we love you guys. We're putting in the extra work to get the show out on time. Yeah. So where were we? Oh, so yeah. She was saying that, you know, she had this injury in 2017 and potentially... <laughs> I keep trying to point to the mic so Austin can talk into it and I keep hitting my hand into the stands. God. Continue, Austin. My bad. She had this injury in 2017, and so she, you know, submitted all the things saying, like, oh, I took all this, this pain pills. Like, maybe that's what it was. USADA says, no, that's not what it is. And then she's like, well, the only other thing I could think of is maybe they switched my bottles at the pharmacy, which is super unlikely because she popped off for Nandrolone. Yeah, which is not really, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a test derivative. So it's not testosterone, but it's a steroid. Yeah. So, so the chances of you getting that. Well, and okay, a mix up or like a, farmer, a pharmacy swap. Like that's such a weird. I guess if you're trying to prove your innocence, you would say a dumb answer because if you have like a really, really solid answer, it's like, well, how would you know to say that? I don't know. Yeah. It's disappointing. Like I like yeah. seeing her be. I also don't really care about steroids because again, I'm on the other end. I'm on like the sports analyst and enjoyment side, so it's like I don't. It's not really in my best interest to really care about steroids. So mm-hmm. I try to not have an opinion on that. But it does suck to not be able to see her compete for the next three years. Well, and IBJJF, she still has that super fight. Line up with Gabby. Did you know? Did you know about this? What? Yeah. So there's a super fight that it's called a uh, BJJ Stars. Oh I shit! Didn't, I didn't see the. She got announced for that. I thought I saw something that said she got announced for Gabby. Like they're they're like signing the contract to line her up to fight Gabby. Oh shit! I'm so excited about this. Yeah. So oh, I mean, God, we're still so gonna excited. get to see her. Well, so. I don't. There's no fight to win announced that Gabby mm-hmm. Garcia was gonna be on fight to win. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know BJJ Stars had announced the second event at this point. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, she, Gabby's doing fight to win. In Portland, and it's like a week after Worlds, so I don't think Gabby's doing Worlds. Like she's not signed up. I thought she was signed up. Ooh, we're getting all our wires qu- crossed. Well, we announced that she was signed up. Mm. You can look it up. So I will mo- look it up. Moving on from this, um, hopefully we'll see those two match up. I've looked. I've been yeah. looking forward for those two matching up for a couple years now. I've been kind of trying to talk it, talk it, talk it because I've wanted to see it because yeah, the two of, of the boat big, you know, giant super heavyweight women or open weight you know, killers, right. and they're kind of of different eras, and so I always think it, it's cool whenever, like, it's the Bouchesha and Hodger, exactly like, this is the say. Porfirio and Garcia, like, I want to see a matchup, I want to see how they look, different eras, different games, different styles, so that would be exciting, so hopefully we see it on BJJ Stars. Yeah, I'd be stoked if that's true. That would be great. Hopefully In- I'm not just on here spreading wild <laughs> rumors, but that's what I wrote down. <laughs> that's what, uh, so uh, in other news, Masvidal versus Pettis has been announced for a super fight. Um, it looks like DT promotion, something like that, in, uh, on 6-15-2019, so that'll be cool. It looks like they're going to feature a bunch of other MMA fighters on that card as well. There's literally about 10 minutes before this recording started. I found information about that, so that will be cool. Um, both are, have some, honestly, some pretty decent grappling, so yeah. I'll, I'm kind of excited for that match. It'll be fun. Uh, in other news, Brittany Elkin, Big Bird, has left fight to win. Um, she was a huge piece of that promotion for a long time. We wish her the best of luck moving forward um, with whatever she chooses to go to do after that. Uh, we also have another announcement, Drown Meow uh, versus Marcelo Cohen on SAGC8. That'll happen sometime in fall of 2019. Uh, Grappling Rewind is doing commentary for that, and I'm super excited for that matchup. That's going to be dope. I'm going to have to do tons of research and get <laughs> that get my commentary on point for that. That'll yeah. be actually in their endurance format as well. Ooh. So that's like their custom format that's like a long form. It's it's a it's a really cool format. When we get closer to the next SAGC event that we're going to commentate here in a couple weeks, um, actually the get, uh, middle of next month, we'll talk more about that format. We'll go through exactly what that means. But it's really cool that these two are going to match up in that format because um, it's going to be awesome. Let's see. In, in other news, ADCC trials for the Asian Oceanic trials, all the footage is up now. Um, on the uh, the Japanese Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Federation page on YouTube, they have both mats up there. They're starting to break out matchups like Wakako Yuasa, like all the Robert Whitaker matches are up. I think all the Lachlan Giles matches have been picked out as well. Um, you had a little bit on Lachlan Giles you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I just saw the results. I didn't get to watch any of the matches yet, but it looks like all of his matches he won by heel hook. Most of them inside, one outside heel hook. Yeah, he looked good. And then, I watched uh, a bunch of his matchups. I didn't take any notes on him because it was like mm-hmm. the week after. We don't usually cover stuff the week after, but because there was no footage and I was so excited about it, I watched it, most of it. 
And uh, dude, he looked good. Like, I'm awesome. super excited. A bunch of the guys look good. It was super exciting to see. Um, like, I love watching trials rounds. I love watching kind of a, any sort of qualifier mm-hmm. where people qualify into a bigger thing. For, I don't know why. For some reason, that gets me going so much. So there's more and more promotions doing that. But ADCC's done it for a long time. So I was super amped to watch it. I just like watching him roll at all. Like, he's super exciting to watch. And then he, I don't he's know. He's like cerebral at, in an interesting way. When you look at, like, some of the losses he has, it's against, like, really high caliber guys like jt torres beats him on like points or something at worlds it's not like and so he'll take like third at Worlds. so like you might not have heard of him i mean people in the community have heard of him obviously yeah yeah, but he's like he's not like a huge name but it's like fuck man like he's really only losing the really top caliber guys and then he's submitting a lot of guys like he's he's like awesome rita yeah Uh, like right when Hassam got black ball like right after that big quintet run that rita made Mm -hmm. and it was like some like super fight in a it's like a chinese mma promotion ran the super fight between these two guys and he like submitted rita like relatively quickly and i was like oh shit like yeah. you kind of forget how he's good lachlan is levels. yes and he's he's been ADCC before mm-hmm. yeah he has like, i think he was there did he was he did he do 17 uh he f- might have been hurt 15 or 17 like one of the i don't remember i know 15 he did a uh, ebi like seven you've or seen him around he's really good yeah adcc asian trials was another opportunity to watch him grapple i think he's really cool he's really like cerebral when he grapples so mm-hmm. the footage is all up on that youtube page Go back and watch it. Also, you wait to watch Rokako Yuasa just crush through her bracket, and she fights a bunch of wrestlers, and it's like it's really interesting to watch just her game in Nogi because it's basically the same thing as her Gi game, yeah, and just with Nogi grip. So it's like a spider guard, like weird, almost like inverted game, and she does it Nogi, and you're like, how are you that good? Yeah. So that's exciting. Um, let's see. I think that's all I got for news. Let's move on to the recaps. Cool. Under a recap of Fight to Win 113 in Reno, Nevada, this event was made event by Kanan Duarte versus Tanner Rice and paid out about $27,000. Um, there's a typo on the payout, so I don't have the exact number, but it's about $27,000 it looks like. So uh, we don't start. Let's start at the top of this one. Let's start okay. at Kanan Duarte versus Tanner Rice. Um, Kanan Duarte is really fucking good. Dude, he starts this matchup and hits like, not even like a Tomonagi, like a guard pull immediately into like a Tomonagi, like, into mount. It wasn't even like a toe mount. He's like rolled over. It's like he pulled guard and rolled over into mount. It's like he blocked his shoulder and like rolled over into mount. It was, it was pretty just nuts. beautiful. It was just like, yeah. whoa. It was immediate too. It wasn't like some like... 10 seconds in? Like he gripped up and then that. like sat and then yeah. threw. Yeah. And then ended up in like... It was really cool because you saw him like pulling and pushing at the same time on the gi to like get the pressure that he wanted from, on rice to mm-hmm. like get the control he wanted. And then it was like dominating top position. He went for, like, a, an Ezekiel at one point. He was going for the arm. Yeah. He was trying to isolate it. Like He probed with pretty much every topside mount attack I could think of. Yeah. Cross collar, tried it. Tried it. Freaking Ezekiel, Ezekiel tried, tried it. it. Arm, arm separation. Yeah. Arm triangle. On, like, both arms. Like, if he, if, he, like, if he put an arm up past, like, his own shoulder, he was going for an arm lock. Oh, yeah. Like, he tried pretty much every submission until, like, uh, Tanner Rice kind of tried to... Try to like, Upa out of a lot of it, which he kind of did. He defended really well, considering. Yeah. I mean, he defended really well. I was super sure, because Duarte is a finisher, so yeah. it was interesting to see how well Rice defended for as long as he did. And again, he didn't tap him. He decisioned him. Yeah. And he was deep. He's kind of kind of not deep in the arm bar the one time towards the end where they were kind of falling off the edge yeah, of the Yeah, like, they had, like, 30 seconds left or something. Yeah. And uh, it was in Tanner's open guard. Like, kind of, they they just broken out of, like, a 50-50 where it looked like Tanner might have kind of come up on a sweep he could have gotten a sweep if he came up but didn't right um i think he was honestly just gassed out from like being mounted for that long because i think you also saw duarte had like the hooks in and then from the mount and mm-hmm. like like arching in like putting a lot yeah. of pressure for good crazy that, like crazy good control yeah and you can and honestly it's one of the hallmarks of duarte that everyone talks about is just how heavy his top pressure is and how heavy like his grips are and, like he just he's a of to roll with is yeah. like kind of like the vibe you get from everyone that talks about rolling with him is that he's just like he's just a beast yeah so again really interesting match it was it's cool to see Duarte go up, going up against another veteran black belt in Tanner Rice because Tanner Rice has been dude competing at the world stage for five years now at black belt yeah he's like number six heavyweight still yeah and so he's still a weight class above where Kanan is yeah Kanan's at light heavy so it's like man he he, he kind of smashed him and it was like it was you just know, again every weight class difference. Dude, every class. time we see Kanan, I'm just more and more impressed with him. Yeah, absolutely. Like, dude, been black belt less than a year. Like, I'm so excited. Like, Morgali is the only dude to sub him this year, I think. Mm. I don't think Gordon Ryan got him. I think Gordon Ryan pointed him at Moby Pants. Okay. That was it. But it's just like I'm just amazingly impressed every time we cover Duarte with just yeah. his black belt. His first year at Black Belt has been ludicrous. Yeah. So anything else we want to talk about the matchup? 
You got any more notes uh, on it? Let me see. Austin, again, has I come with, like, full-size sheets this time of paper mm -hmm. and old-school written-out paper notes. <laughs> I like how you call written-out things old-school, like, pen and paper's not a thing anymore. It's not. Live in we live in digital age. Yo, I have them sitting in front of three screens and a phone right now mm -hmm. with wireless earbuds. Like, mm -hmm. we live in the future, Austin. Mm -hmm. You're here with ripped-out paper notes written with, mm -hmm. like, graphite and sand. Graphite and sand? Is that what ink's made out of? I don't know, man. I'm not a, a math guy. <laughs> Uh, no, I think we covered it pretty well. Okay, let's move on to the next matchup. Amanda Montero defeats Karen Atunas via split decision, and she becomes the fight to win flyweight champion for the ladies in the gi. Yeah, I think if you're an open guard player, this is a pretty cool match to watch. Um, Amanda Montero, someone to watch for sure for open guard, and then Karen, kind of the same thing, but on the opposite side of house for like a close guard. They kind of had a lot of battles where they both made the exact right decision at the exact right time. So if you're kind of a novice grappler or viewer may not be the most exciting to watch but it was definitely super technical like yeah if you saw you saw a lot of the right decisions being made mm -hmm. in this match and it was cool because it also it moved around a lot which i like too there's yeah. no it didn't get super stalling in any position where i'm like all right i'm waiting i'm waiting but I'm you could see their games too and that was the thing that that was kind of the point i wanted to make like uh karen's on top at one point she's kind of like in this headquarters position where amanda has a spider on one bicep and then what Karen does, which is, I mean, this is like kind of the meta to stop it. She puts her, she's grabbing like a pant grip of the one, the leg that's not spidered. And she's pinning her shin to the mat. So she can't technical, technical stand up and she can't really generate a sweep. And it's like, man, that's the exact right thing to do. Balance her weight like perfectly, kind of sitting that like squatty kind of headquarters position on top. It's that, like that middle grounds position. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're just kind of it's waiting. Like, you're not right? going to sweep me unless you let go of the spider. And it's like, well, you're not going to pass me unless I let go of it either. Yeah. So it's like kind of a stall but like like it stalled out like at a stalemate not necessarily that either one of them was yeah, like it was I, I like those positions and it's it's interesting to see especially like this weight class because it gets real it can get real scrambly mm -hmm. you see when both players like oh that's the correct thing to do oh that's the correct response oh and they, they kind of sit there where it's like both players are waiting for something to happen and it's not necessarily a stall it's just right. like i am doing the correct thing in this stalemate's position stalemate's probably the best word yeah and what's like any any move i make is incorrect at this point for right. both parties so it's interesting and then you saw them both kind of work through it and, yep. and, and keep the match going it didn't just sit there like i'm only gonna hold the position so i i appreciated that from the competitors because yeah. like you saw okay we're stalemating okay and we're gonna move on here and both kind of competitors kind of went okay we're gonna move on from here yeah karen well i thought that i thought the decision was really interesting too did you, what did you think about it i did split decision yeah but amanda won what do you think i don't think it was a bad call necessarily i mean it was pretty back and forth but when we talked to seth before and the guys that fight to win it seemed like Submission attempts counted for a lot more, and I yeah. felt like uh, Karen had more. She she tried a flying triangle at one point that she that she jumped on, um, and then she like kind of spun to a knee bar when like the triangle didn't work. See, in my notes, I don't have that. Like, I don't have a. It problem didn't get with that it. close, like the like the attempt. Yeah, but she did have to clear the attempt. Right. From, so it's, from it's, I understood, I would I would count that as like a submission. A attempt. submission that requires defense. Yes, is, is how it is usually like. A submission that finishes, and then you have like a submission that requires defense, and mm -hmm. you have like a, a submission that did not require defense, but you threw something up, and then mm -hmm. you have if nothing and none of that happens, you have like positional dominance and passing and like aggressiveness, right. um, slams kind of submission. So, and I thought it was pretty back and forth too. Yeah, that's, so that's like, why I didn't have a problem with the decision. Like I, I didn't have a problem with it. I was just like, man, if if I were trying to score it in my head, I think in this format in particular, I probably went the other way, but a split decision didn't really like. It yeah. didn't upset me. I was just like, huh, I wonder what they counted that I didn't see. But it wasn't like a, I'm so upset, how could this possibly go that way? You right. Know? So if you if you are curious, go back and watch the match. Tell us what you think. Yeah. So uh, moving on, um, you stop me if you want to talk about, talk about a particular match. Okay. We have Jerry Harlett defeating Dom Hoskins via split decision. We have Sam Rice defeating Patrick Welsh via toehold. That was a cool one. Did you watch that one? I did watch that one. So, so... <laughs> The way you Sam, looked at you looked like, did you watch the one? Yeah, yeah, I watched that one, yes. I know, you watch Oh, by the way, man, ever. dude, Reno, this car went late. Yeah. I, this the, the finals for this was like at like one fifteen in the morning, and I'm watching it. I was like, like eyes is, bleeding. This is really cool. And like my eyes would shut for a second. I was like, ah, it's really cool, though. I'm watching it. <laughs> and then my eyes would like slip. I was like, I will definitely catch this on the replay. The entire event's up, so go back and watch it. There's a lot, I don't say, there's a lot of really like good back and forth matches on this mm -hmm. card. Like it was a f super fun card to watch. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, So yeah, Sam, it seemed like he ran through his whole game like kind of verbatim like exactly what he wanted to get done like it seemed very strategic and like planned out 
So we opened with a with a guard pull to like a Tomo. Shouts out to to Patrick. He had like a really good like balancing act through it and ended up in his close guard. Um, but then it just seemed like Sam had the meta game dialed. It's like he had, Patrick, he, had the, he had the answers at that point. Yeah, like, exactly. And you, saw, and you saw him like, all right, I'm gonna do this. And it was like it was yeah. real, like veteran. You just saw you like he knew yes. what he was gonna do. So it seemed. So what ended up happening is um, Patrick stands the pass like the typical like standing. I'm gonna zipper your collar, pin the other hand, standing pass, and so like Rice almost like immediately bails on it, ends up hitting like this knee bar from like this 50-50 kind of position, but it seemed and then he switched to a toe hold for the finish, and it seemed like oh okay, it's like I'll try the knee bar, it's not there, cool, I'll try the toe hold, like it just seemed like he just kind of walked on the positions. And yeah, but like, like, I, like I do this, I, I do this then. Like when people do this in my closed guard, this is what I try. If that doesn't work, I try this thing. It's like you saw exactly the and you knew if like the toe hold wasn't gonna work, like he would have the next thing. And yeah, it was, exactly. It's cool. Like I love watching grapplers like that for like match study because you can look at. A series of matches, I'm like, oh, this is what he does here. Yeah, exactly. Makes him kind of easy to game plan against, and at the sure. high level, like, that can be kind of problematic. But then you have a guy that gets really, really good at it. And it's like, cool, you know what he's gonna do. You can't stop it anyway. But I like guys like this for match study because, like, oh, he, you see him make the decision, and like, mm-hmm. this is what he drills. This is what he does here. Yeah, exactly. And so it was cool. Yeah, because it wasn't necessarily like Patrick Walsh made a bunch of mistakes. It was like, oh, he just had that part of his game ready to go. Yeah, he's ready. You're you're getting you're a black belt competitor. Like mm-hmm. you've drilled what you want to do. You know what you're gonna do. Mm-hmm. So it was a fun match. Yeah, it was a cool match. Next up we have uh Shannon Colos defeating Matthew Hamandong via Kimura and that was Fight of the Night for the Black Belts. I'm reading the names now because we had a we had a rough <laughs> go at it last time. I don't know how you took over doing it, but that's cool. Yeah, Shannon Callos, uh Matt Temendong. That was a really cool fight. Um it had a ton of action. Both guys are really good wrestlers. So early on, you saw like really, really cool takedown exchanges, a lot of scrambles. It was a really back and forth match. Like it was, it yeah. was a fun match through and through. Deservedly Friday night for the black belts. Like mm-hmm. I think it gets it based on action. Like it's just like these dudes were going, and it was like they were going for it. I have a bunch of exchanges written out that I won't read to you just for like the sake of brevity because it's literally like this guy tries this submission, this guy escapes, tries this submission, yeah. the other guy tries it, but like. I think the big thing like, like they traded back and forth yeah. like a bunch of times. It was just like he'd do one, he'd do the other. It was almost like they were like it almost kind of looked like a floor roll. When I mm-hmm. watched it, I was like, I know they're competing. I know they're going super hard, but it looks like one guy tries, the other guy tries. Yeah, if one you ever watch tries, uh, the other guy tries. Like Bill Bill Cooper, Jeff Glover, like floor rolls back in the day yes. where they're like exchanging submissions. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. Never happened in real life, but that's really cool. This. Probably about as close to it would get in real life. Well, there was a couple turnovers where I was mm-hmm. like, wait, did the other guy just do this exact same sub from this position a minute ago? Oh, well, yeah. Well, well like, Kalos, um, it seemed like the main focus of his game is uh, Kimura control, like the Kimura trap yeah. system. And that's what ended up winning him the fight at the end. But, like, there were a bunch of spots where Matt did the exact right thing to get out of it. It's like he has Kimura from, like, bottom side control, bottom half or something, Kalos I'm talking about. And then Matt like does that big front roll over his shoulder, and then turns turns back into him quick yeah, enough turns that the he can't. Really quickly. Yeah, so that he can't take his back. But it's like, man, like he did it like twice, exact, I think. Yeah, that's I the exact right it. thing because he ended up on uh on his back like a bunch of times. He ended up on Callus's back a bunch of times, like yeah. from doing that. This is a fun match. I forgot how like how fun this match was. Yeah, this it was, was really like good. a deserved fight of the match. This is actually one you should go back and rewatch. Like, For sure. I might I might watch this and actually shoot this over to Emil. Like, hey Emil, is this uh, a real recommends? Because mm. he is the curator of that list. But this is a lot of fun actually. Yeah, it was so. a, it was definitely a fun. One. You got anything else for this one? Uh, no, that's it. Definitely right. check it out, especially if you're a fan of Kamora Control. It was dope. Next match we have Brian Chag defeating Chuck Rooney via toe hold. We got Chad Bingham defeating Kaiser. Su- Sulabayev via choke, and that was submission of the night for the black belts. Yeah, Chad Bingham. I met him at uh, that same Sarah McMahon seminar like three years ago. You want or a something. beta? Yeah, beta grapplethon. He's a pretty high level black belt. He was just there. Just I think he dates Sarah McMahon or something. <laughs> But I don't know. I mean, just I don't the know. Way, sorry, just the way you said that. Like, I think, like, like zero confidence whatsoever. Know. You were I mean, just like, I mean, like, maybe this is a thing that happens. It wasn't like he dropped that in conversation. Like, oh, see her I over ho- there? I would hope I not. date her. I would like, hope not. That was not a, not a conversation we had. But, yeah, he looked pretty slick. It was a, it was like a leg rope where he jumps to the opposite side, like a, like a pass that looked really cool. And then he ended up attacking, like, a Kimura armbar kind of setup. And then ended up bowing arrow wing. So it was like a really cool transition between those like three moves, like back to back to back, that I yep. think got him this mission of the night. Yeah, it was, it was just it, slick. the whole series was just like and he kind of you saw him roll through again, go through like a game that he's obviously drilled really, really heavily to get to the position, mm-hmm. get the bow and arrow, and just finish it. Mm-hmm. it yeah, because most most of the match up to that point was kind of this really protracted like knee shield half guard battle where Chad was on top. 
So it took it took like a long time, like for him to pass his guard. But then once he passed his guard, it it was like you saw pretty, the, you saw pretty, the series the, yeah. the series get going. Yep, real the rap traps yeah. kind of went off. Yeah, it was a, so it was, was fun. fun. It was a cool it was a cool match. Next match we have Garrick, Garrett Aldrich defeating Art Emerson via split decision. We have Nicholas Green defeating and. Kevin Thompson via split decision. Under the judo match, there was only one judo match on this card. We had, uh, give me that, Emil. I mean, give me that right. <laughs> Can't even get my name right, dude. Austin. Jeez. Man, it's, it's 1 a.m. in the morning right now. Like, I got work in a couple hours. What's a work, and how does that work? <laughs> the, Talia Walt defeating uh, Jenna Van Whitbeck. Yeah, and she defeats her by choke. And Austin, and I talked about this before we reported the show because, um, so the judo rules for fight to win are like old school judo rules. But if you get to the ground, they give you thirty seconds to work, and then if you know there's nothing in thirty seconds, they stand them up. But this match, we thought on the ground went a little longer than thirty seconds. So we kind mm-hmm. of talked about why we thought that happened, and I thought it was because the choke, because um, Walt had the choke so deep, and it looked like Whitbeck was like. Almost tapping a couple a couple times, doing an outstanding job of like changing. It was a clock choke, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like, so she was following with her hips for like a really long time until she got the turtle. And it, the, you, you heard the thirty second bell go off, and it looked like the choke was like in and like done and like dead to rights. And it had looked like that for like ten seconds, and yeah. they still fought. And you saw Seth looking at him, looking at him. I'm not sure if Seth didn't know the time or was like, "Look, I'm not gonna stand them up." I think it was probably the latter, man. I think it, I think it was like the choke was deep enough. It was a pretty solid, pretty solid clock choke. So I'm pretty sure that judo players are really, for some reason, of all the chokes, judo yeah. players have really dope clock chokes. Probably just from nasty grips from <laughs> gripping like standing all the I time. I feel like it's one of like the few chokes that you can do in judo. Like there's bow and arrow choke and there's the mm-hmm. clock choke. I feel like the way the rule set is structured, like you can't like do guillotines and other stuff. Like you have to do like those are the chokes sure that are available a, to you. I'm, I'm not sure if it's like a because of the rule set or because so many people turtle because. If you go to your back, you get scored on. Uh, that like makes under sense. Under any honestly. rule set, so it's like if you roll to your turtle, that's the choke that's there the most, and it also makes sense like that belly down armbar is there because turtles there so much. Right? Huh? That's, I've never thought about that. That that's why they're so good is because the meta for judo fosters the turtle. Yeah, I think that's probably more what it is. Because she, they're, she hit it from so um, good. The throw she did was like I think she did like Tani Otoshi, and that typically ends up with somebody. Not on their back, but like in their turtles. Yeah, so that yeah. Makes if, a lot if, of it, sense. if it doesn't get all the way through, it's tiny. So mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, Walt gets the gets the clock choke. Um, mm-hmm. Dope clock choke. And I love watching judo people clock choke because yeah. there's very few jiu-jitsu people that do it as well. Like yeah. judo people just have a, they have nifty setups for it. They have nifty sit throughs. They like they know how to put the pressure up and they can get it usually pretty quickly because they have that limited time to work on the ground. Yeah, it was also cool. Like uh, <laughs> this is like a weird. AV nerd thing, but the camera angle was like perfect for it. Oh my god! Like, you could beautiful. see her face, and you could see your hand tapping, which doesn't always happen in grappling matches. So, shout out to the production team at Fight to Win for yeah. catching that. It's awesome. So, moving on to the brown belts, we have Vince Barbosa defeating Troy and the Night Pigeon Everett via head and arm choke. This is a lot of fun. Uh, this is, I think, Troy's first shot at a belt in like twenty Fight to Win appearances, <laughs> and uh, Vince Barbosa is, I think, the current Pans champion for the Masters division. Yeah. Um. Dude, this is a fun match. Yeah. So was, both of them throwing a lot of subs up. Yeah. Troy had a lot of uh, snap down guillotine attempts, which I thought was really cool. But you could definitely tell that was like the thing he was gunning for. Dude, Lots of guillotine attempts. The arm and guillotine. Troy Everett does like a couple things, but he will snap you down to a arm and guillotine mm-hmm. and he will darse you. Mm-hmm. Like that is his bread and butter game. Yeah. I think Vince just also had a head and arm choke too. But yeah. Vince had a ton of like different types of submission attempts. There was some, at some point he was attacking like an ankle lock kind of heel hook. Troy like kind of kept his composure. He ended up sweeping, getting on top. Um, Troy had like a really cool like butterfly attempt. It just seemed like Vince was really attacking the entire time, and Troy was kind of battling back and just kind of couldn't put it all together enough to like sustain an attack. It was, long a, it was one, of, one of those momentum fights. Yes, where it's like you saw Vince like it was kind of even on the feet, and I think I thought Troy was like, "Oh, he's getting close to the snap down," and then he got to the ground, and you saw Troy kind of like you saw the momentum kind of shift towards Vince, and then you saw Vince sort of take more ground, and eventually he was able to like get the head, get the arm kind of trapped up, and lock the head and arm choke and get the finish. So he becomes the Masters Nogi middleweight champion for fight to win. That, that sums up really well. I don't think I have much else to say. It's a fun match overall. Next yeah. match, we have uh, Ryan jenner defeating Anton Green Gibson via heel hook. We have Minor Jim- Jimenez Morales defeating Scott Christensen via decision. We have Clint Treadwell defeating Tim Flagon le- via leg lace calf crush. We have Joseph Bacay defeating William Salvo via split decision. That was Friday night for the Brown Belts. We have Frankie DeMarta- DeMartino. Is that right? 
Yeah, Di Martino. Di Martino defeating Albert Tapia via decision. We have Ro- Roman Schlomberg defeating Dan Dykeman via ankle lock, and that was submission of the night for the brown belts. On to the purple belts. We got Zach. Give me that name, that last name. Falcons. Falcons defeating. You, you want to try the purple belts now? Sure. All Zach right. Falcons defeats Ray Cartwright, Carnwright. Choke. That was also and that was submission of the night for the purple belts. I say like one thing. Let me say submission of the night. <laughs> Next keep match. Going. Yeah, keep going. Tim Principe defeats Brian Beck via Ezekiel. Courtney Dubois defeats Kyrie Fontana. Oh, Fanata. I don't know. Fontana by rear naked choke. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Espinoza defeats RJ Ward via choke, and that was fight of the night for the purple belts. AJ Leo defeats Phil Watson via via heel hook. Look, you can get him wrong. You just gotta be confident about that. <laughs> like, dude. 80 episodes in, Ooh. actually, like, more than that, because we've done bonus shows. Mm-hmm. Like, just be confident and then apologize at the end. We have we've it built into the bumper of an apology. Like, at the end of our show, we, you know, say, like, hey, subscribe to us and, like, rate us five stars. And, like, oh, by the way, if you've never done that, um, please leave us a review on iTunes and uh, tell your friends about the show, because that's really the best way that we go to the show, and we really appreciate that. That's basically what the bumper sounds like at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. So, um, if we butcher your name and you would like us to correct that in the Since future... all when, the hate mail to Maine. When it. we cover you, it all comes to me anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, let us know, and I'll try to pronounce your name more effectively in the future. We've had a couple people reach out to us uh, on behalf of their friends, people with <laughs> their gym, and behalf, on behalf of themselves. Like, hey, my name is actually this. This is the correct pronunciation of it. Please start doing that. So Fair enough. On to the next one. On to the next one. <laughs> Autumn Norton defeats Nicole Johnson via split decision. Zeth Martin defeats Adam Johnson via choke. Matthew McCray, McCrary defeats Tommy Cervantes via choke. Racon Savath defeats David Park via guillotine. Rebecca Tomata defeats Deborah Lopez via decision. Jason Puig defeats Caleb Lancaster. Doesn't say how. Aaron Matthews Fez defeats Rodney Van Corman via Komora. Under the blue belt results, we have Kelly McKay defeating Ashley Silver via Komora. We have McKay Mitchell defeating Trish Getzman via Armbar, and that was submission tonight for the blue belts. We have Aaron Gonzalez defeating Zach Dell via North South Choke. We have Destin Russell defeating Daniel Davis via Split Decision, and that was Friday night for the blue belts. We have Patty Jean Southworth defeating Melanie Hernandez or Hendrickson via Armbar. We have, uh, give me that name, Karimbin Sebri. Defeating Eric Swain via decision. We have Alec Myers defeating Richard Wells via decision. And we have Adrian Chambers defeating Chris Rios via split decision. So that does it for Fight to Win in Rio. The whole event is up. Highly recommend you watch it. Again, it was a lot of, a lot of fun matches. A lot of really good back and forth matches yep. on the card. So uh, that does it on the next one. So on to our preview of Polaris 10. This event takes place on Saturday, May 25th, 2019. It's headlined by Uriah Faber versus Nikki Ryan. Um... In an interesting matchup, like I'm, I'm excited to watch it, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know what Uriah. Uriah's a good wrestler. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong; he's a good MMA fighter. He's a good mm-hmm. MMA grappler. Yeah, and he, we've seen him on Quintet. We've seen him do submission grappling, like yeah. Stuff. Quintet's mostly the stuff I've seen him, and he did. Um, That's really he did an ADCC trials, maybe like a long time ago. Yeah, like as a brown belt, and then is he's he still a brown belt. I assume he's a black belt now. Okay, I think he's, I think he's been a black belt for a little bit now. Okay, I mean, it makes um, sense. But Nikki Ryan is Nikki Ryan. Yeah, I don't know what he's gonna have for Nikki Ryan. Dude, we've really. seen Nikki Ryan sub, run in a sub th- in a sub only format. Like, what is he gonna really? We've seen Nikki Ryan run through so many like competitive, current like top level black mm-hmm. belts, or like or like want, compete with them at least. Like we saw him versus Jim Martinez. We saw him like choke Keith Corian, which no, we fucking choked Keith Corian. Right. Like we've seen him just be on a tear recently. We've seen him smash a number of like. Older Japanese MMA fighters and mm-hmm. Japanese grappling standouts in like Polaris before and like Quintet. Like, yep. I don't know. I don't know what Uriah's path to victory in this matchup is. Maybe, but I'm it's a hard ask. Guillotine him. That's like all I can really think of. Yeah, I mean, he has a really really tight squeeze because he, he has, has that a, wrestling background. He has a dumb. And honestly, all the alpha like, male guys have a dumb guillotine. Mm-hmm. Like they have a real good guillotine. They can sub anyone in the world with it. I just don't see them. I don't see any way that I feel like that's not the most dangerous tool to use. Against like such a highly skilled grappler like Nikki Ryan, do you know what I mean? It'd be one thing if it's like, oh, I have this toehold. It's like, yeah, because you can kind of catch toeholds from anywhere. Like guillotines are something that you can kind of be a little more. I don't know. You can kind of steal yourself to a little bit better. Yeah, I agree. Like, I mean, it could happen. I mean, it I could just, still happen. I just there might be a strength disparity where like you can just get a nasty snap down or something. Dude, Nikki's getting bigger. Yeah, I believe like, it. He's has to cut to he's make a grown man. He's, I mean, it was a, he's a growing boy. I was gonna say grown man. He's, he's a growing boy. Seventeen now. Yeah, he's like right. he's big now. Yeah. Like I, I would assume he's honestly probably bigger than Uriah going into this matchup now. Mm, 
I don't know. Your eyes pretty damn thick. He is thick, but he was a 35er. Like, it, it'll mm-hmm. be interesting. I foresee Nikki taking this one either by rear Same. naked choke or by heel hook. Yeah. I honestly it wouldn't surprise me that he's pathing to the back and he's still working, getting into ADCC, mm-hmm. like pathing to the back. He's going to probably use the Kimura system to path to the back to get the rear naked choke. I assume he'll probably finish starting over the face and then slide it underneath the chin and get yeah. the finish. I would assume he uses that same system that, he, that a lot of the Danaher guys use with like the body triangle, trapping the arm under the leg. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to wrestle with Uriah, though, with ADCC mm. coming up, because Uriah is honestly a pretty decent wrestler. He's a really good wrestler, I think. So, yeah, yeah, she is, yeah he's, a really, he's a really good wrestler. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he kind of tries to get the work in in that in that in in this setting mm-hmm. leading up to ADCC, if he's using this as an ADCC kind of training thing or if he's using uh. this as like a showcase matchup. Because, honestly, Uriah is a similar size, mm-hmm. really good grappler, veteran competitor. Yep. So, it'll be interesting. I, again, I see it. I foresee him getting the finish that way, but I'm sure. curious to see how if long this with him. Yeah, how long they spend on the feet before it goes down. So, you got anything else on that matchup? No, I think that's pretty it's Featherweight, actually, as well. It's a no bout. So, next matchup, we have Mateus Lutz versus Craig Jones. Dude, this is exciting. Yeah, like, man. Mateus has looked awesome. Craig Jones has looked awesome. We've seen him, like, we saw him against Argus. Like, since the Argus matchup at Grapple Fest, Craig Jones has kind of looked like he reinvented himself a little bit, mm-hmm. and he's less married to that, like, Z guard, knee shield, saddle entry. That's the only thing he's going to do. Mm-hmm. He looks more apt to do other stuff. Um, I don't know if this is for the title, because I know Craig Jones took the title off Keenan last time, so it may be for a title as well. Mm-hmm. Um, wouldn't surprise me. Is it the me. same weight class? Uh, I do not know. Because it says middleweight here, we have it says middleweight. But I I'm thought not sure Craig Jones. I thought Craig Jones was a, was the middleweight champion. Mm-hmm. Might have been light heavyweight, but I thought he was the middleweight last time. Mm. Uh, I should know this as a <laughs> per quotes here professional grappling guy, wrestling grappling analyst, analyst guy. <laughs> and you guys can't see the quotes, but there's super hard air quotes here. Um, this is exciting. Like Mateus Lutz is a great top pressure grappler from that Mar- from Marcelo Garcia. We've seen him. Uh, who did he just beat? Mm. If you're going to ask me that question, you would definitely know. If you don't know, I don't know. He just beat a dude recently that was a monster on, like, on some card we've covered in the last two weeks. But it's <laughs> one thirty in the morning, so I do not remember right now. Um, this is exciting. This basically, I think this is either Craig gets to the back or gets to the heel hook. I would honestly see, I foresee him with Lutez pulling. Mm-hmm. And then Lutez, you know, really have really heavy pressure passing. But potentially he can get past Craig's legs. You think legs. so? He might be able to do Lutes passing is absurd. Like yeah. the way he barrels into people and just like the the level of pressure and intensity that he throws at the beginning of a match and his passing sequences, I could see him getting past Craig Jones. Like how long he's gonna stay there and before Craig sure. like inverts and gets back yeah, that's, out. That's kind of more my thoughts. Like, yeah, you get a pass, maybe you would get points if it's like a you know, like a point setting, but I don't know, that's kind of what Craig specializes in is like inverting off of your like pass right. attempt and then getting back into like a leg lock. Yeah, so again, and it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me either way to see mm-hmm. Lutez just like stall, throw a north south choke super hard, potentially even get packed like the mount here mm-hmm. and mount Jones and like work from the top. It also wouldn't surprise me at all to see Jones like invert and then go hard onto the legs and put Lutez on the defensive early. Yeah. So again, I actually can't pick one, pick a matchup for this one. Neither outcome would surprise me. I kind of favor Jones a little bit just mm-hmm. because he's been competing at the black belt level. Longer, I think Lutez is still technically a brown belt. Is he really? I think he's again. It's in quotes there, like a monster brown belt. Right. I could be wrong about that, but um, I think Jones just has a little bit of the edge at the black belt level and the experience. So I potentially would favor him. He's also more familiar with the Polaris format. Yeah, I would say the format's probably going to be the deal breaker. He's definitely more of a sub only guy than points. Like, yeah, definitely. Not that he can't win on points. Well, Polaris is the fifteen minutes, so they and they judge yeah. it by rounds. So they don't actually have rounds. They have that fifteen minute format, mm-hmm. and they judge it each five minute section of the match, but they don't stop the match. I kind of like the format. That's cool. Um, sometimes it runs a little long, but overall, like I'm a I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Polaris. Like I like the matchups they put on. I like the guys they showcase. Uh, and this is honestly a really fun style matchup. I think it'll kind of bring out. I hope it'll bring out the best in both guys. Yeah. So on to the next match, we have Ash, Ash, Ash Williams versus Ethan Krellenston. This is fun. I think both these guys are in ADCC. I know Krellenston is. Krellenston won the East Coast Trials for ADCC um, a while back. And they've done some really cool promo packages. Oh, yeah. Polaris is doing a bunch of, like, promo packages leading up to this. And they're mm-hmm. talking with all the grapplers about, like, their matchups. And, like, they talk to Josh Palmer, who's the commentator for Polaris, about, like, how he thinks matchups are going. And, like, mm-hmm. there's some really interesting little an- analytical pieces that they're posting on all their social media. Like, Polaris is killing it with the lead up for this. Mm-hmm. It, it's made me excited about so many matchups. And this matchup is a lot of fun. I could really see Kronstein getting the back here. But yeah, I saw a lot. 
speaking of like the marketing and like the lead up promotion stuff, I saw a lot of like Gary Tone in the last week talking about Nikki Ryan and Uriah Faber since they've trained together before. Yeah. Not to go back, not to backtrack, but I thought that was some pretty interesting anecdotes he had about. It was a while ago though, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So it's like they've trained together, but it was a while ago, and mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't remember that, but it was kind of cool. Which to... probably makes more of a difference for Nikki than Uriah, because I doubt Uriah's developed so much in the last couple of years. No, you kind of. But got... Nikki is, you know, he's coming into his own as like an adult, so like. Right. That's the, oh, they trained together for Quintet, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, Gary was talking about that a little bit in the promo stuff. It was cool. Like I, I love, I love all of that behind the scenes, like lead up and promo, and like that's kind of what we do on this show. Is like we yeah. look at stuff before it happens, and then we talk about it, and I think about the matchups, and then usually in our team chat, like we throw, like I think this is going to go. Like we were talking about uh, Margali versus Keenan, like you know the pathway that Margali has to victory, the pathway that Keenan has for victory. Right. When we get close to that matchup, we'll talk. You know, as a whoever's on the show that week, we'll talk about that matchup. But like that's one of the things that kind of gets me going. So I love when promotions do that ahead mm-hmm. of their cards. I'm like, hey. We're talking to this guy's coach, and we're talking to this commentator. We're talking to, like, this person on the card. Like, what's your path to victory? What are you looking at? Like, I just enjoy that. If you're going to make grappling a professional sport Mm -hmm. that gets covered, like, you need those, like, show pieces. You can't just broadcast a card with, like, The production value contributes so much. Like, if you think about, like, like boxing or, like, like football or something, those 24-7 or those hard knocks, like, where they show the training camps and, like, you see how hard these dudes are working. You kind of see them grappling with like other big studs and like how they're doing against them, and then talking through their kind of their game plan, their mentality. That stuff like gets you hyped. Like, dude, it gets me so hyped. It's like, a story, right? Like, you get to see what goes into a match, not just like, ah, oh, here's two guys grappling. It's like, nah, this dude uh, gave up partying for like his twentieth birthday, you know, or whatever it yeah, might have yeah, been. It's, it's the story behind it. I, yeah, I makes love it that kind of stuff, and it gives me it gives me more bu- more. I don't need I don't need any more buy-in, but it sure. gives me more buy-in to watch. And to be excited about certain matches with certain For guys because sure. you kind of know what they're doing, you know their game plan, you know what their coach is concerned about. It's like mm-hmm. I like that, and it, I'm I'm really excited that Polaris is doing more of that, and they're doing a really good job with it too. Yep. Like it's not just in front of a camera a guy. Like they have the audio in the background, they're doing like some rolling footage, coming back to the commentator. Kind of, right. it's like it's done in a really really good way, and I'm like Polaris is just killing it with like the production quality recently. So on to the next match, we have Kyle Uno versus Lee Rem. Uh, I know his name. I can never, when I read it, I can never read it. Now, Remondalos, Remondalos, <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, we can't do this. This is the latest we've ever done a show. Remedios? Remedios. Next matchup, we have Richie Martinez versus uh, Maya mm. Parvaka? Piravic. Piravic. And we have Ash Williams versus Nick Rodriguez. Dude, Nick Ash Rodriguez. Amos. Ash Amos, oh my god, man. Ash, There's two guys named Ash on the card, which is my problem. Ash Amos mm-hmm. versus Nick Rodriguez. Nick Rodriguez gave the funniest like promo I've ever seen for a grappler. Did he? I have to go back and watch. I didn't see it. Dude, I sent it to you on Instagram. That doesn't mean anything. It was basically like, I don't watch anyone. I just go out there and do what I do. <laughs> you know, it was, But it was just like, it was... It was like super cocky, yeah. But it was also super matter of fact. Of like, we just talked about that. Yeah, I don't care about humility when it comes to entertainment. Yeah, we talked for like thirty minutes before we did the episode mm-hmm. of like you know what we like. What we liked about certain cocky grapplers or certain cocky guys and like fighting or other sports like LeBron. We talked. We went through a whole big thing on talking about like perception and like people as role models. And Austin and I are both in the camp of like, look, if you fight good, I don't really care what you do. Yeah, I'll just throw the one quick example we had. Out of like the ninety that we swap back and forth, yeah, was like Anderson Silva when he lost to Chris Weidman. There's like a gang of pot belly dads with barbecue sauce stains on their shirts, talking about, oh, that's what you get for showboating. I'm like, you get eleven world title championship defenses. Like, I'll I'll take that. I'll showboat a little bit then if that's what I get. Like, I, I don't know what it is where people like want everybody to be super humble. And Anderson Silva is very respectful, but I wouldn't call him humble. Like, God, no. he knows he's good. He is good. And I, he knocked I think out that's Tony fucking with an upward elbow. Right. Have you seen that? He's that knocked out the lots greatest, of dudes with the, silly stuff. The greatest heights of all time. You seen him fight Forrest Griffin? I yes. saw that fight. I watched that fight to this day. And then hear Forrest Griffin talk about it to this day. All of his fights were exciting. Even when he loses, his fights are exciting. Uh, with the exception of like Damian Maya. Okay, the couple, one fight that was yeah, a terrible couple, fight. Yeah, a couple fights here and there. But the, like, an exciting fighter. Same same thing with like this. Like, same thing with Nick Rodriguez. If Nick Rodriguez wants to be cocky, I'm down for it. Yeah. Keep winning. I'm going to keep letting you be cocky. It's great yeah. to watch. And it's same thing with, with Gordon Ryan. Yeah. It's like, uh, you keep winning. Like Call I, yourself the king until somebody beats you. It's great. Like, I like it. And even if someone beats you, it's like, okay, one guy beats you. Like, yeah. 
like until like a gang of guys beat you, then it's like okay, you're cocky for no reason. But until mm-hmm. then, uh, you've earned it, kind yeah. of. As long as you're clever too. Like, there's definitely people who are good and they're cocky, but they're not really that funny. They're just trying to like play a role to sell tickets, which is fine. Do your Dude, thing. Nick Rodriguez, I've met him a couple times now. Mm-hmm. Genuine. Yeah. That's just who he is. I he's like just it. like and he, but I also like his mindset going into these. Mm-hmm. He's talking about his mindset for ADCC and like whenever he gets on the mat, he's like I deserve to be here and I'm better than whoever I'm fighting and I'm going to beat them. And like, that's great. That's his mindset going into all these matchups and like doesn't do tape study. He's like, I'm gonna go out there and do what I do and then I can be able to stop me mm-hmm. and like good luck. It's, it's dude, served this, him well so far. A hundred and five kilogram catch weight. <laughs> Like these are big dudes, yeah, and I'm excited for this. That's the matchup that opens the main card. Preliminary card is loaded with a bunch of other fun grapplers. I think the whole thing is on Fight Pass, which is awesome because I think Fight Pass is one of the best like interfaces to watch grappling for any event because they have like submission attempts get that put uh, get put up there. You can look at like match start out, like walk out, walk in. Like I like that it makes like tabbing through events really, really easy. Mm-hmm. And for us and for me that covers a, a ton of grappling every weekend makes it awesome. So you, anything else on this card? No man, I think awesome. we got Let's go on to the next one. So under our preview of Finisher Sub Only Nine, this event takes place on May twenty sixth at Pure Mixed Martial Arts, twenty one Pine Street, Unit twelve, Rockway, New Jersey. Uh, I was at the last one. It was a lot of fun. I highly recommend if you're in the area, go to this one. This one is an all-female card showcasing the women of Jiu-Jitsu in basically the U.S. and the East Coast area. Really excited about this one. Uh, this is going to be a 16 I was going to say pound, a 16-woman bracket, uh, 115 pounds, and that's for 2500 bucks. It was a pretty decent payout. Yeah, it's not bad. It's awesome. And then it also features um, an undercard with women and then a three female super fights. So at this point, I'm not exactly certain what ones are the super fights. Um, never mind. I found them. <laughs> we have Sophie Sharp versus Lilian Ramos. We have Kate Gonzalez versus Lauren Sh- Strausser. Strausser. We have, give me the names here. Tara Heber versus Mona Bailey. Mo- Mona Bailey. Mona Bailey. We've seen her on On It. We've seen her on a bunch of stuff. She's looked really, really good. Um, I've seen her win a bunch. Like she's, she's been on a terrorist. I think she ran into someone like real, real tough, like a like a real tough brown belt on it that gave her some problems. And I think might have finished her mm. last the last time I've seen her. But I think that might have been the only time I've seen her lose recently. Looked has looked really good every time I've seen her out. Next match we have uh, Aslan O'Connell versus Laura Kent. Um, oh sweet, that's um, Laura writes for my MMA news. We use her articles. Really, really frequently when we cover a lot of stuff on the East Coast, especially a lot of stuff with the 10th Planet, uh, 10th Planet people in it, she does a lot of that, a lot of the write-up for it. So we, uh, it's awesome to see her grapple. I think, I'm not sure if we actually covered her on Superfight before, so that would be good. There's a number of other women on this card. Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly who is in the Superfight card versus who is in the actual tournament. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I highly recommend if you're in the area, this should be streaming with uh, Show the Art. On Facebook, sorry, on uh, YouTube, it, the production is usually great. Jagger Buddha does the commentary for it. Um, again, I can't say enough great things about this event. It's a lot of fun. If you're in the area, attend it. Definitely one to watch. Um, I'll be looking forward to recapping this next week. <laughs> so on to our preview of Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. This event takes place on Sunday, May 26 in Long Beach, California. Starts at 5 p.m. I want to su- I want to assume that is uh, West Coast time, so it's going to be starting super late. This is a 16-man Combat Jiu-Jitsu 135-pound event. We have returning champion Gio Martinez. We have Ben Eddy. We have Hideo Tokoro. We have give me that next name. Michael Perez. We have Nick Holstein. We have give me the name. Ara Muradayan. We got Nick Pace. We have Sharon Moran. We have Tyan Yuasa. We have Randy uh, Villa, Villarreal. Villarreal. We have Barrett Yoshida. We have uh, Gabriel Daffron. That's fucking, uh, that's um, Austin Daffron. Duck Jitsu. We've uh. seen him win, uh, we saw him win one of the earlier finishers a little bit ago, and he got a bid to Ultimate Matt Warriors, and actually won Ultimate Matt Warriors for versus Marcelo Cohen, mm-hmm. actually. And then uh, that, I think that was a semifinal matchup, so he's a, definitely a dude to watch. I want to say there's a bunch of guys in the tournament who can take it. We have James Barnes in this, we have uh, Richard Alicorn, we have Pablo Alfonso, and Marcelo Cohen. Speak <laughs> the devil, there he is. So, uh, dude, I think there's like, six, honestly, there's a bunch of guys mm-hmm. in this rule set that could take it, like Martinez could take it, Benetti could take it. Hideo Tokoro could take it. Um, it's so tough to tell when you add slaps in. Like 
and you dude Yoshida has a ton of MMA experience mm -hmm. like but a lot of these guys like Cohen and Daffrin are like standout jiu-jitsu guys in the sub only scene like have looked good in the rule set but also like Daffrin's younger he's actively adding stuff to his skill set mm -hmm. like guys like Nick Pace and like there's a everyone on this card honestly this is a really really well matched card mm -hmm. there's uh, I mean and then guys like Gio are always front runners to take whatever event they're in because he's just you know a pretty yeah. monster grappler against all sizes and styles yeah I think it'll be really interesting to see phantom weights with strikes because it'll move so much faster than some of the heavier guys like yeah. heavy handed heavy guys yeah. So it'll be pretty interesting. I, I feel like guys will be much more willing to move in bad positions versus mm -hmm. the heavy guys where it's like, all right, I got to kind of shell up here sure. and like and like move and like kind of be more conserved by movements because A, like there's a gas tank put there, but also B, like that dude hits me like it's problematic. The bantamweights, yeah. you, we've, seen, we've seen KOs at bantamweight before. I think one of the two KOs we saw was a bantamweight KO, hmm. but I feel like last time we saw the bantamweights out, there was, there's a kind of a pace and an action here sure. that's pushed at that weight class yep. that I really enjoy especially given all of like like just all of the the names you have here like mm -hmm. there's a bunch of dudes that could definitely take this so that's this is exciting I'm, I'm more excited about this than I initially was um, these have been a little weird in the past but honestly the last one finished in like two hours yeah. I want to say so there are probably some super fights uh, thrown in there as well look for it again it's on fight pass it's one of the easiest ways to watch grappling you can jump through stuff really easily for us it's really awesome to cover things on fight pass but um yeah may 26 anything else awesome uh nope all right that'll do it so one of our preview was sogi 2 this event takes place on may 25th in east coast mma fitness in hicksville new york uh, not new jersey new york uh this one features a women's absolute 16 Women no gi tournament with EBI rules as well as a four team quintet challenge. This will be uh, Sogi's second event. They also have a number of super fights like, um, well, I'm going to find the name here uh, Jordan Holy versus, one second, um, Nick Gulo. We've seen both these guys before. We've covered both these guys before. I'm sorry, guys. It's about 2 a.m. I'm starting to, I'm starting to lose it. I realize that it is past my bedtime. Um, we've got a lot of cool names in the women's 16 t tournament. I'm going to run through a couple of them that we see really frequently. We have Nicole Kent. We have Abby Passanelli. We have uh, Jillian Peterson. We have Chelsea Chandler. We have Laura Kent in this one as well. Uh, we have Amanda Levy, who is the ADCC West Coast Trials winner, took that over Maggie Girandotti uh, with that like fall over armbar. Looked really impressive recently. Austin nodded his head at me like he was going to say something and then didn't say <laughs> anything. Um, so that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. The event should be – that that bracket should be really good. I think it's streaming on the Sogi Facebook page. Uh, it was when we streamed last time, and then it may be streaming on YouTube this time. The Quintet – uh, team versus team, we have Team SAS versus Team 10th Planet, and we have Team Fellowship of the Reap, which is a dope name, versus <laughs> Pinelands BJJ. So um, the first two teams, SAS versus 10th Planet, is going to go first, and then Pineland versus King of the uh, versus uh, Fellowship of the Reap is going to go, and then the winner of both of those two is going to go against each other in the finals. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, looking forward to this one. Should be it should be interesting there's a number of other super fights on the card as well zach Edwards on the card um yeah it looks like a it looks like a lot of fun definitely check it out all right awesome so this is by far that, that does it for this week <laughs> on the show this is by far the latest we've ever gone it was 1 45 in the morning yeah, and man. i am like stumbling over words and i gotta get up in like four or five hours for work yeah man Lots of uh, extenuating <laughs> circumstances led us to oh, yeah. recording Let's talk so about this. So Game of Thrones happened. Game of Thrones happened. And I haven't watched. I'm only about six seasons behind, I think. Oh, okay. I'm going to catch up eventually. I mean, Apparently, there's only seven total, but you're six seasons behind. I'm five seasons. Five and a half seasons behind. Okay. Me. I'm on season two. No, there's eight. You're right. There's yeah, eight yeah. seasons. Did it just finish? Mm -hmm. Do we that know who the has the throne now? The we throne? sure do. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out. Like, I won't spoil it. Thank you. I'd, I'd be upset. And and listeners probably would be too. Yeah, that's actually it. that's actually reasonable. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Also. So yeah. Austin. Uh, so I had to watch that first, obviously. And I I thought that was only an hour show. Wrong. And then apparently like, at the final, so it's an hour and a half. So yeah, I was it was like, eighty oh. minutes. So Austin will come over at like mm, 10, 10 o'clock at my house, but we hear ten thirty. We'll start the show, mm -hmm. and then like ten forty rolls around, and I'm like, <laughs> hey, uh, I was like, what's up? On like messenger, and then no response, and I'm like. I would like to go to sleep. I got a bunch of uh, graduation shift for my brother in Annapolis. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, you were telling about it. Yeah, he's graduating from the Naval Academy, and they have, like, a week of events. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wait, what? 
like a whole week of mm-hmm. shit that I'm like should go to, and it's cool. Like I'm excited for him to do that, but yeah, I also didn't budget to spend a week in Annapolis, yeah, like every evening. So enjoy that. No, thank you. Yeah, I also don't like cadets, but that's because I'm in the army. But that, that's anyway. Cool. So yeah, so then Austin texts me um <laughs> at like eleven ten, mm-hmm. and he was like, uh, "Hey," and then this is the story <laughs> of what Austin texted me. Yeah, so I'm driving out of my neighborhood, and you know I live in like a townhouse. It's not anywhere especially seedy, I wouldn't say. No, so I it's, a, it's an, I don't say it's a pretty good area. It's like a, yeah, you live in a pretty, I, live, I live next to like a we church. We live in Baltimore, but like it's Baltimore County. We live Baltimore County, like it's yeah. it's a nicer area of Baltimore. Like that's why mm-hmm. we both bought property there because <laughs> it's a nicer area, and it's not. We both lived in the city before. Yeah, we both moved out of the city to move yeah. into the county, like into nicer areas. It's quiet. So yeah, so yeah, I'm on my quiet. way driving. I get to like an intersection, and a car is kind of parked the opposite way, and it's a one way street. So I'm like, hmm, that's odd. And I kind of glance back in my rear view and I'm like, that looks like a leg. And then so I kind of take, you know, turn myself around in my seat and see and what's it's, going it's, on. It's 1130 right now. At yeah, night, it's about 1130. And Austin's driving. No one else is out on the road but me and Driving car. to my home so we can record this, uh, mm-hmm. this week's show. Mm-hmm. So I kind of take a second glance and it is like a splayed out grown woman just neck on the curb is like a baby pillow, like mid neck. Like she looked like she might have fallen out of like. I, I don't know, like an airplane or something. She is not laying on the ground the way a normal human would lay on the ground. Um, and so I kind of take a harder look, and I'm like, well, the trunk's open in the car. The car's still running. I'm like, let me double back and make sure people aren't dead. So then I had kind of had a better thought, like, it's 1130 at night. We're in Baltimore. I'm a black dude, and these are white people just, like, laying out in the street. Maybe I should call the cops and not <laughs> approach them. So I call the cops, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if they're alive or dead. Or what's going on? I don't see any weapons. Like, maybe you should come check this out. At which point I call Maine. Like, hey, I'm in this parking lot staring across yonder at what might be dead bodies. So, <laughs> yeah, <and just> like, <laughs> might just, be a little bit late. He just called me. He's like, hey, uh, I got a thing. I want to ask you a question. And I went, okay. Because Austin, you're a pretty stoic guy. Like, you don't really... Mm. You don't really get like amped about stuff. And you're just like, let me ask you a question. And, like, really? You're like, this is what I'm looking at. And you described <laughs> the scene to me. And I went, what are you doing? You're there still? Like, yeah, I'm gonna like hang out to the cops get here, just just in case. Like, just typically, to... I would say I probably wouldn't call the cops if like, oh, it's like, wait, drugs in Baltimore? You say? Like, no way. <laughs> like, it, it wasn't like a particularly <laughs> like, in Baltimore. yeah, it wasn't like a particularly alarming thing. But I think because of the proximity to where I live, you know, the, the county, the, the county text I got from you was what you <laughs> thought it was three minutes. They thought it was three I've, people, and it just happened to be that like they had fallen into like you know the way that crackheads fall when they pass out. So it was like just legs, like a tangle of legs. And you would think doing jujitsu, I'd have a better handle on how many people it was. Nope. So <laughs> ended up only being two people really just passed out from like some sort of opioid. They got Narcan and woke up when the cops got there. It was fine. They ended up being fine. They just had OD'd and just fell out of their own car. Apparently. I don't but know. As, how. Re- as a result of this, Austin was yeah. tied up with the police and other stuff Right for, Late, so we didn't start recording till after midnight. Mm-hmm. Um, this show, so if it comes off a little like Maine is particularly more dumb than usual, that that would explain. Yeah, I probably talked. If you probably told him my time of like content, this is probably the most content I've talked. It's just this ending sequence. It's like, hey, there's fights going on. Cut to me. Mm-hmm. There are fights. <laughs> like, but no, you get some good stuff for fight to win. Like, I think yeah. honestly, like you wouldn't be here if I didn't think you were a good analyst. Eh. Like, you're a good analyst. Like, you talk about stuff well. Thanks, like, you man. describe you describe the scene well. Like, the mm. crackhead story is a great story, <laughs> and it explains why we're recording at two a.m. in my house. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what else you got going on? What, you, you do any comp- competitions coming up soon? Yeah, I'm gonna do tap cancer out, man. That's gonna be cool. It's like a little charity fundraiser event. They did a uh, professional card uh, a little bit ago that was streamed on Facebook. We tried to cover it a little bit. We instantly got some results for it a couple weeks later. Mm-hmm. Um, really cool event, like really cool organization. And they're too. gonna do some more of that. I was talking to the the founder, and he seems like he's really into like the event scene. So he he wants to run like a tournament when he goes to a city, but then also kind of put on some uh like some fight to win style kind of events. That would be kind of cool. Because they showcased some really cool black belts last time. I think Mark Vives was on the card, and there mm. were a couple other like really cool. Like matchups on the card. I think Lawton was on the card. Jared Lawton was on the card as well. Um, I don't remember, but um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully they get that streaming sorted out and we're actually able to cover them because, yeah. again, it's a really cool organization and I like like the causes that they support. For sure. So yeah. um, I talked to the owner a good bit. He came to our gym and trained with us a little bit last week. Um, him and one of his blue belts, and they seem really like really down to earth people. Like, I don't know. 
they seem really cool. I, I'm I'm excited to compete on the van. I've not competed for them before, so. So anything fun. else? Anything else after that? Mm, probably. There's always something. I'm always doing like these small tournaments. No one literally watches. So. You, did, you did trap. You did trap like recently. I did do trap. They kind of they kind of stream that. Where actually, I think in the, the mm-hmm. next time that trap runs an event, I like I really enjoyed um their stream. There was a really really well put together stream. Yeah. And uh, you were actually at the event. I think Josh was at the event as well. Yeah, Josh came up and coach for me. So, um, yeah, he was going to compete, but then I'm getting injured. So, so yeah, the team was really good. So I think we'll cover them in the future for events. So that was that was cool. Um, mm-hmm. My back is still pretty jacked. Oof. I got another doctor's moment tomorrow, so we'll see. Um, we'll see how that goes, and they'll be like, "We're gonna more more injections." I'll be like, "Let's do it." Mm-hmm. So I've been swimming a ton. Yeah. And, uh, do I hate swimming? You should keep doing it. If that's all you can do. Dude, for now. I swam a mile, like in one go in one session. That's. Significantly, seventeen hundred yards. I'm so bored. It's a. It's <sighs> like I'm getting better at swimming, which is weird. That's cool. Are it's, you, it's not cool. I mean, I don't know. At least you're getting better at something. You can show some improvement. At it something. is. I'm like learning how to flip, turn, and do other stuff. But yeah. I realize, like, man, I hate swimming. Like, it's just not a pleasurable experience to me. Like, I'm in the water. It's like all of the benefits of exercise while also trying not to drown. So you're learning a life skill. I got lifeguarding. And I stopped doing that for a reason. I was like, cool, let me get out of the pool. Like, I know enough to keep myself safe and save another person. And then, like, that is the skill tree that I don't, I don't need that skill I mean, anymore. let's say you get back into jiu-jitsu. Like, you already had really good cardio. I mean, I guess you'll have more of it. Dude, my grappling know. cardio is probably terrible now. Eh, there's some light resistance. I've been, been off the mats for, like, for six some... months. Like, in any, mm-hmm. like, sort of, like, training sort of way since my knee injury mm-hmm. back in January. Well, yeah, you're still going to have to take it slow when you first get back, too. It's not like you're going to jump right back into it. I would hope not after yeah. a, a 10-month or a year of injury. Yeah, I just hit my year mark for injury at this yeah, point. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I wouldn't worry about your cardio right away if you're, like, barely rolling in the beginning anyway. I just want to put a gi back on. Dude, I'm shopping gis right now. Just what, Just wear them around the house. I might. Robes. All right. So, anything else, Austin? I think that's it, dude. All right. That does it for this week on the Grappling Rewind. As always, I'm your host, Maine. with my co-host, Austin. And we will see you on the mats. If you like the show, please consider sharing it on Facebook with the folks at your gym. It's the best way that we grow the show and we really appreciate it. You can reach out to us on email. We also have Instagram. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We have Google+. Plus. Until that shuts down. We have a website. If you have an event you would like to have us cover, please let us know. If you have a name, like most people do, and you'd like to have us stop butchering it, let us know. Reach out to us. The show is also available on YouTube, Spotify, in addition to iTunes and every other podcast service. We very much appreciate your time and thank you.